so that people can get to play. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's uh, Monday morning. It is the uh, 12th of September, and uh, this is a smart networker. <clears throat> and thanks for being on. And if you're watching this as a recording, that's great as well. So a uh, couple of things today. I was working on a project. I didn't quite get it completed. Uh, I'll make that available in the next couple of weeks. Uh, it's more on the lines of uh, I'm rewriting the, the book, The Smart Networker, which basically is a, a, a second generation of the first book, which was called Vested Interest. And then I've added a couple of other things like the Take a Look series, uh, the Building Success series, and frequently asked questions that have come up as a result of doing these calls, the Monday morning Zooms. And of course, the whole reason for me to do this in the first place was, you know, basically, I was tired of, you know, the stuff that was being put out that really wasn't the truth. It was more like the hype and the... <laughs> you know, or, or what somebody else figured out for themselves and uh, wasn't something I could duplicate or do myself. And, and that's why I decided, well, there's got to be a way that we can communicate and teach this business so that each individual can then take that information and apply themselves. And here, here's what I found. And, and this is probably a good way to get into these two questions that came up earlier on the call. But we're all individuals. And as a result of being individuals, we all have our own way of doing things. Now, this is a very interesting viewpoint because with that, one can listen to somebody else and and look at and, and you know try and understand what they did or what, what they were working on or how they approach things and think that they've got to do it that way. And because that way was developed by that other person and based on their circumstances, their situation in life, what they learned, how they were brought up, all of that good stuff, it's foreign to the person that's observing it. In other words, the way I built this business is probably going to be very hard for you to do or duplicate uh, because that were, those were my circumstances. It was based on my knowledge base, my experience, what I'd learned, all of those kind of good things. And But what you could understand were the activities that I did. You know, one of the activities that I did in the beginning was I talked to anybody that would talk to me. <laughs> okay. Uh, because I didn't have a crystal ball. I didn't know who was going to participate. I didn't know how that was going to work. I did know this, though. I did know that um, my job was to find out what was needed and or wanted. And by that, I, I and because and this was because of experience. Uh, and my, I'd done a lot of marketing and selling for traditional products, yellow pages, oil and gas investments, uh, you know, stocks and bonds and securities and, and real estate and other tangible goods. And for the most part, the people that got those things or got involved needed or wanted them. Now, they might not have known at the beginning that they needed and wanted it. So therefore, education was an important aspect for them to become aware of. And or they might not have known they wanted it because they didn't understand what was involved or the potential. And, and, and therefore, education was important to understand. But it was all based on needs and wants. So if, if somebody didn't need what you had to offer, then they're not going to buy it. I mean, that's just plain and simple. E even if you go through all the stories and all the fancy frills and all of that kind of stuff does not necessarily mean that even then they're going to get what you want. So it's a process. And, and again, it's, it's really important. So in the beginning, I knew that there was no way to say, okay, well, that guy, he's going to be the guy <laughs> or that girl, she's going to be the girl. No. 
it's like you've got to go through the 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 mechanical aspect and by I mean the mechanical aspect the, the the activities that are known to to create the results so a couple of points were brought up to, today that will relate to this and the first one was you explain the products to somebody and then it's what what's next you know obviously you explain the products to somebody what you would think is next is that they're going to buy that product now the key question is is you know so you got to kind of walk this backwards and say how did you get to that point of explaining what the products were was there any kind of search and discovery to find out if that was an important issue if this was something that they needed and or wanted or was it just you were throwing your stuff on this person unbeknownst to them? And it, which is typical because again, there, for some reason in this, this business, there's no rhyme or reason to how one is, is initially started. I mean, some people, you know, sign the guy up, okay, go make a list, go talk to people, get them some product and get them involved. Then no education, no indoctrination, no understanding of, of what to do or how to do it. And so they don't have a complete picture of the activity that they're doing, where it's going, what it's gonna to lead to, and how is this a part of a bigger picture? Because everything's a part of a bigger picture. Now, I have to admit, I had an advantage when I started this business in, in Nikon, um, because I'd had experience with 13 other companies of a similarity or a similar structure. And I had observed what happened as a result of people doing what they're supposed to do. Now, this is an interesting aspect. I'd seen this in many different fields. Um, I, you see it in life all the time. You see what happens when you do the right things in life, and you see what happens when you do the wrong things in life. You, you see what happens when people break the rules in life, and you see what happens when people live by the rules of life. So as, as, as we grow up and gain experience, we get to see what happens as a result of doing certain things. So when I came into this business, I came in with a purpose. And that purpose was to build it so that it would provide my basic needs really simple not not some altruistic goal or you know some hardy toddy thing it was just basic stuff okay i'm doing this because i need to it's a way i can earn a living you know and and that that is i wasn't looking at anything else i wasn't looking at how i could help people i wasn't looking at how i was going to change the world i wasn't looking at how it's going to save the environment none of that stuff I was just looking at it simplistically like, okay, man, I, I need to make some money and you know, I think I could do it here because I had experience. And, and so therefore, one of those things to answer that first question was, I needed and wanted what this had to offer. This is a huge position to understand because if the person you're talking to needs and wants what you're offering, and this could also apply to, to number two, if, if they need and want what you have to offer, then getting them involved or getting them to sign up or getting them to purchase the product is really a, a simple process. You just have to ask the question. And, and, if the, and if the question that you ask is, okay, so let me sign you up or let me take your order or whatever, however you want to phrase that, is either going to get the result done or it's going to open up for well maybe there's another question or maybe there's more information that's required or maybe there's a hesitation and it just needs clarification now here's how i would look at this how do you respond when you're out trying to get things that you need or want or how do you respond when your approach to get things that you don't need or want becomes the real issue and this is a, it's a great learning curve. I, I always taught people that, you know, if you're hounded by people calling you on the phone, take the calls, 
and, and, and understand and, and listen to what they say. <laughs> I had a young guy call me today and he was approaching me on a business service that I just don't need. Now it was really fascinating because he never bothered to clarify what I needed and wanted. He just kept pitching and pitching and pitching and pitching me on something that I had no interest in. It wasn't part of what I did. And it wasn't, he didn't qualify me for what were, what did I need or did I want? So this then opens up many doors, but again, experience leads that way. So if I were selling the product or if I was building the business, what I want to, who I want to talk to are people that are potentially interested in what I have or, or who want to, to get more information about what I've got. Now, for example, I, I used to work in the insurance industry. Well, I still am in the insurance industry, but I started with Mutual of Omaha up in Canada. And there was a TV program called Wild Kingdom. And there was a guy on that show called Merlin Perkins. And, and of course, my job was to go out to the farmlands and talk to farmers about sickness and accident insurance so that if they were farming and they fell off their tractor and they broke a leg or whatever the case may be then they could get insurance to then supplement their income while they were recovering because they didn't have a job they were farmers and of course what was really interesting was two things one knock on the door hi my name's dave Rolfe. i'm with mutual of omaha and they'd say okay and then i would say you know the show wild kingdom oh yeah yeah I watch that every sunday night because they all did i mean it was just no question so the door would open now one of the first things that i was trained to do is you know get their understanding for the need you know qual another qualify them for the need for what they have and of course that would be okay, you're a farmer, you don't have anything to back you up, what happens if you get sick, what happens if you have an accident, and to create the importance. Anyway, to make a long story short, once that was established, then once you went through a presentation, the end result was getting what I would call, this is what you should do, is the agreement. Okay, so let's talk about another subject real quick. I'm going to interject this, because this is really important reality so if we were looking at a sale the reality of that sale taking place is based on an agreement the agreement between you and the person that's buying the product so you present the product they are interested in the product and they agree to uh, uh, buy it and you agree to sell it so it's the agreement that makes this all happen so for example, you're talking to somebody and they say, no, I'm not interested. So you have an agreement of sorts, not the agreement that you want, but the reality that's gonna be created is they didn't buy the product. So that's the reality. Now, on the other hand, if it was something they needed and or wanted, and you showed them all the benefits and the perks and everything that was involved with it and how efficient it was, whatever the case may be, and they buy the product, well, then you have the agreement to buy the product. So the reality is based on agreement either way. So in the sense of talking to these farmers in the field, what my job was to create an agreement of their circumstance and situation to worst case scenario. So if you fell off the tractor, you broke your leg and you couldn't drive your tractor, you probably couldn't, you know, farm the land and get the week done or you'd have to hire somebody that would cost money. You know, do you understand that? And then they would say yes. And then they'd start to see the need for what was being offered. So a lot of times people that haven't got the, the initial training, they're thrust into this business, they like it, they want to get going you know, just start pitching the deal, pitching the deal, pitching the deal, or selling the product or selling the product. But the first step is to find out what's needed and wanted. And, and you know, so, so for example, let's talk about water for a minute. 
Well, we know that by the year, or it's the, the scientists say, that by the year 2035, there will be no clean drinkable water on the planet Earth. Now, that's a pretty staggering statement to make. Now, of course, there's clean water under the glaciers and there's clean water, you know, there's spots, but it's, can we get a hold of it? Can, is it groundwater? How do we get a hold of it? Can people use it, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a pretty staggering statement to make. I, I remember when we had Dr. Naidu associated with Nikan and, and he uh, was the creator of the, the solution for toxic shock syndrome. Um, he, met, he told, uh, told us in a couple of conversations that all water has birth control chemicals in it, all water. And if we look at, you know, people take psychotropic drugs and they, they don't finish them, they throw them down the toilet, goes into the water system. I mean, when you think about how the water gets polluted, I mean, there's a, there's a big uh, thing going on right now with Camp, uh, Camp Lejeune or something like that, where the, the water was polluted because of some chemical that leaked and into the groundwater and all kinds of diseases and catastrophes happened. And of course they have a big fund and lawsuits, et cetera, et cetera. So what we know is, is that that's a huge problem. Now, on the other hand, we also know how important water is because I think it's like you can go maybe four or five days without water, but after that you're dead. So it's a fine line. <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, it's a fine line of consumption. It's very important. And we also know if you do the right homework, all the problems that are associated with being dehydrated. And again, it's the doctors and the, the ones that really know this stuff are saying that all Americans in, in this country are clinically dehydrated. So they're not drinking enough water uh, to, and the, the system is, you know, your body is a, a bag of water <laughs> when you look at it. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, so a lot of information there. And then, and so then you're talking about somebody getting a water filter for their house that costs $426 retail. And what are they possibly gonna be thinking about? Well, they're gonna be thinking about the cost of 426. When if you broke that down and said, well, what's the cost per glass of water or bottled water, or compare it to something else and where there's a comparison or understanding of information. Again, then, oh, okay, I see. So really, I, this is really cheap water. Yes, agreement. So the whole pr process of what we do is creating a series of agreements so that when you get to the bottom line, what's the bottom line? Well, you ask them to get the product or you, you know, all right, I'm ready to write up the order. Which product do you want? The blue one, the white one, the yellow one, the orange one, the tall one, the skinny one, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Always offer a choice. And then, and then are you ready to get started? So when I was building the business, we weren't focused so much on selling products. We were focused on getting others to become distributors. But what we knew is, is that there was a filter. It was kind of like you came in as a distributor, but not everybody wanted to be a distributor. And then that filtered down to being a consumer. So you still ended up with the same end result. <clears throat> There's just a slightly different approach. So for me, it was, are you ready to get started? Now because I'd had involvement with other products being sold or consumed, I was taught, trained, however you want to uh, talk, talk about it, how to wrap up the transaction, how to wrap up the sale, so to speak, how to ask the question, what to do, how to, how to position yourself. And, and again, there are other elements that are important. So if you're in that position, one of the important pieces of being in that position, you're controlling the environment. In other words, you're in a place where you can just, okay, <laughs> you can get the job done. You're not going to be distracted. Now, and, and again, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't be talking to somebody and say, okay, well, here's the product. It costs $4.95. Let me know if you want it. You wouldn't do that. Because 
they don't know what they want for the most part. You, you're the one that's introducing this product. You're the one that's got to get them excited about it. You're the one that's got to provide the information. And you're the one that has to establish the agreement, which then creates the reality. And, and again, we know, let's, let's go to the other side of the coin. We know if we survey the people that have the product, they love it absolutely love it i mean they wouldn't be without it i mean you just hear testimony after testimony after testimony well what's the difference between the front end and the back end experience using it getting the benefits from it so sometimes you know this is a funny funny story but there were certain foods that i just didn't like how they looked so i wouldn't eat them and of course, this is not something that's unusual. This happens to a lot of people. And, you know, anyway, my wife got me to try something different. And my God, I loved it. Now, isn't that interesting? <laughs> I tried something different and I loved it. And I, you know, a bit before I put up the, you know, the objection, I'm, no, I'm not interested. No, I'm not going to do that. No, I don't want to eat it. No, I'm, I, I don't like it. But yet I hadn't had any experience with it. So the key to getting people to, to want what you've got is to make sure they understand what it is, that they have a need, that they have a want, and that they understand the benefits that are, uh, are related to that. And then to make sure that they don't have any considerations that would affect them moving forward with it. And what's a consideration? Well, I don't know if I if it's just really going to help me. That would be a consideration. Um, man, that's pretty expensive. That would be a consideration. Um, you know, man, I you know I. I you know, I think I can get by with the tap water. I think that's fine. That's another consideration. So what I found in my experience and what I learned how to do was I had to make sure I understand what they meant by that. And there was a book that uh, I read many, many years ago called Big League Sales by an author by the name of Les Dane, D-A-N-E. It's no longer published. I think original copies of his book now sell for five or six thousand um, dollars. I mean, very, very well authored guy, but he nailed it as far as the sales industry and a, and a, basically a bible on how to sell products and deal with objections. He, he absolutely nailed it. So anybody that was anybody that had a business that dealt with sales and all products are sold you know, went to, went to him, he's dead a long time ago and, and so on and so forth. So I had the opportunity to study this man and, and um, understand what he was saying. And it's like, sometimes somebody will come up with something as an objection, but it's really not an objection. They're just scared or they're afraid or they're not sure of themselves or what, you know, because people don't want to be taken advantage of. And, and good salesmen have come along to all of us and taken advantage of who we are because of, you know, we get enamored with what they talk about or what they say, et cetera, et cetera. So it was, I, I learned to, to do this one very important thing. So if I ask the person, all right, let me get you started. And then they, they said, well, I'm not sure if I could do this. My first response is, okay, can you clarify that for me? I'm not quite sure I understand what you mean. And if they come back with the exact same answer, fine. You could say, well, what do you really mean by, you know, you, you can't see yourself doing this? Is there something specific about it? Whatever the case may be, then it could be what's called the legitimate objection. Now, say, say, for example, you're, you're trying to get somebody to, to do business and, and they say, well, listen, I, I already work two jobs. Uh, I have a family. 
I have two young kids. My husband works. I have maybe five minutes every day to read a little bit. I just don't have any time. And, and you're trying to get them involved because you want them, you know, well, number one, the first thing I'd say, <laughs> no, they're not qualified. They don't have any time, you see? But the new person might say, well, yeah, yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. They might not see that. So clarify when somebody, so for example, you explain the product, you ask the question, okay, once you've explained the product, do you understand this? Do you see this? Does it make sense to you? Is this something you could, you could see using, could you see the benefit? And what are you doing when you ask those questions? Well, you're getting agreement. If they keep saying, yeah, yeah, I can see this agreement. I could, I could understand how to use this. Yes, agreement. I can see the savings in this, that's agreement. So what is agreement? What, what's the end result of agreements? Reality. So the reality of them having the product and being a customer looks very good. And if they come up with something, they say, well, I'm not sure about that. It seems to be awfully expensive. Well, okay. How do you, what do you mean by awfully expensive compared to what? I mean, you know, if it was compared to a chocolate bar that costs you a dollar, yeah, it would be fairly expensive. You could have 400 chocolate bars. Or if it's compared to a bottle of water, it's actually quite cheap, you know, because you pay a dollar for a bottle of water, but here you could have a bottle of water for four cents. Oh, clarify, understanding creates reality. Okay. And then asking, obviously asking the question, but more importantly is before I would go in on a, on, and this is a whole different topic. It's how, how basically, how do you approach somebody? Where do you go? How do you start? You know, there's a couple of videos you can find on DaveRolf.com on, you know, what to say to get started. Um, I always started with, you know, let's what, here's what I wanted to know. I wanted to know where there was a problem in your life. And that's the area that I would tar to try to target. And the second aspect of what I thought about was I knew that everybody was trying to survive on this planet. And by that, I mean, they had to have a job, they had to make money, they had to have a roof on their home, you know, if, depending on what part of the planet they lived on, they needed a roof, they needed clothes, they needed food, they needed, you know, all of those basic things. So in America, that's a, a, a almost a necessity. So that was my approach. I went there first, because I knew that was probably the most important aspect of, of where somebody was at, how they would survive. And again, if you do some quick research, you're gonna see that there's a few people at the top and a lot of people at the bottom and people are climbing this societal ladder of moving up towards the top. And, and for some, it's a big deal. For some, it's a very big deal. For some, it's very important. For some, they really want that kind of stuff. I just sent out on WhatsApp uh, you know, about the millennials of how important some of this stuff to them is. And, and they're the, the largest generation right now. And they're the ones that sh we should be talking to for the most part. And, and they have similar needs to what we did, just slightly different. But anyway, you can learn what to do with that and cater to, to those needs. So again, my approach was, you know, okay, so are you happy doing what you're doing? And is this gonna get you what you want kind of question? And you know, I found the goose that laid the golden egg. Would you like more information about that? And, and that, especially with the people that I talked to, I, that was my favorite, you know, one of my lines. I found the goose that laid the golden egg. <laughs> well, we all heard that story as a kid and we all knew what that was about. And so, you know, we utilized that. And then that opened the door. Uh, some, some conversations, would you be interested in making an extra 10,000 a month? Open doors. You know, now, if I saw somebody that had a physical challenge that I knew I could quickly fix, I would, you know, deal with that and move on. But what I, what I also had in mind was the bigger picture. And because I'd been exposed to the big picture, I had seen what a successful networker had created. I knew what that looked like. I saw people march across the state getting huge checks, having big organizations, selling tons of product as a group, 
you know, God, that was very appealing. <laughs> it was really appealing, something I wanted. And for my position at that time, I was stuck between a, a proverbial rock and a hard place. I needed to put food on the table for the family. So it, it was nothing else. And again, that's what was needed and wanted. And that's what I focused on. So from the standpoint of, of that approach, you know, maybe what I would look at is how are you approaching people and, and how can you tweak that so that you, you're, going, you're going after what you want and, and, and then creating that agreement versus going after something that may or may not be wanted uh, and is not what you need or want. So that would answer that. And as far as the other aspect of, you know, I'll tell you a fine story. When I was in the oil and gas industry and I was, it was telemarketing sent out we would send out packages then follow up a week later and present the actual presentation and then ask the person to join us and i called this banker in kansas send him out the information he was interested he wanted to take a look at it i phoned him back we had a presentation which was really just a script it was storyboarded on my wall i'd start at the beginning and i'd read it all the way down uh, after a few months i knew this inside out backwards so i could you know, sit back in my chair and I'll be talking to him. Yeah. And then by the way, blah, this and that. And, you know, it was totally memorized. But I, so I get down to the end and I, I pitched him on an investment of $10,000. And I got down to the end and I said, let me get you started. Now, I was taught when you ask that question, then you zip it. And, and I was taught when you, you, you wait for the response and, the, and, and the, the datum was whoever spoke first basically was committed <laughs> or lost as they say. And so there was dead silence for five minutes. I mean, just nothing. I was sitting there on the phone. I, I, I was, my knees were shaking. I was nervous in the boot, my boots. And it was like, oh my God, what's going to happen? Should I say something? Did he hang up? Is the phone still going? I mean, there were all kinds of things going on in my mind. And then finally he says, okay. And I said, great. So and I said, in the back of the package, you're going to see an agreement. We need to pull that out and let's fill that out. And then I'll send FedEx to pick up your check and a paperwork. And they went by, they picked it up. The next day it came in. Here's this check, $10,000. The agreement was signed. I made $2,500 as a commission. Now, on that day, on that day, what I realized was that, oh, my God, look what can happen if you go to work. I could phone somebody up that I'd never met in my entire life and, and explain something that, you know, and then he'd send me money and he'd get involved. Well, that just changed everything in my life. This was prior to, you know, this was back in the 80s. And I was just getting involved with, um, you know, networking uh, per se in a serious way. And I learned that. And it was just like, oh, my God, this is, uh, this is absolutely incredible. So, again, if you're going to you know, be in that position of asking them for the order, then take it to the end, you know, take it to, to where this is, uh, you know, take it to, yeah, take it, finish it. So are, are you ready to get this product? And then if you, then listen, listen to what they say. Well, yeah, I got to think about it. Okay. Well, what do you got to think about? I'm the expert. <laughs> if you have any questions, you got to ask me. I mean, you know, you could play that way or you could say, I, I understand. What is it that you need to think about? And, and then you just take it down and you keep asking that question until they either say, OK, I'm ready to go or it's a legitimate objection. I don't have anything to pay for this now. I can't do it. I left my wallet. I lost it on a plane. I have no bank account, nothing. I can't do it. So you're going to have to call me next week. OK, that's could be legitimate. <laughs> At the other end, it could be a great excuse. So it, it, it's just stay on top of it. Now, if if after you've you know tried to do what you've tried to do and it's still not working, then there's then here's what you have to understand. There's a problem. There's an issue. 
something hasn't been discussed. Something needs to be so the best way I know how to deal with a problem is confront it. Look at it, face it, deal with it. Because if you don't, it's going to haunt you and bother you. But if you do, then you can at least have a shot at, at solving the problem or dealing with it. Now, it may turn out that that particular person isn't going to buy your product. Fine, move on. Don't waste any more time. Or it might be a technical issue. Fine, clear it up, move on. So that would be how I'd answer it. But anyway, this was good because it I got to cover a, a lot of points. And 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 so the 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 bottom line is, and, and what what I was working on as the and we'll hopefully get it done for next week is, you know, kind of like how do you start? Where do you start? What do you do? And 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 here was the most fascinating thing in listening to other people. Everybody, and this is why I wrote vested interest in in the first place was it was it was style and technique versus the mechanics. So the example that I used a lot was I was told to put together a list of 200 people and I didn't have 200 people. So that style, what that person said affected or could affect how other people interpret that information. Now, what I knew was, was that you're continuously going to have to talk to people. So whether you got 200 or 100 or 50 or 10, just start, <laughs> start talking. And then when you run out of people to talk to, find some more. And then when you run out of people, find some more, throw an ad in the paper, go stand in the corner, do surveys, whatever the case, because here's what you need to know that the, the basis of our success is people. We need people. So that's a given. So there's no, no mystery to it. There's no magic to it. You just need people. And it's not a matter of you need five or 10. You just need people. And just keep going and keep going and keep going. There is other data that you need to understand as far as how it works. And so you find one person. Now, this, this is really fascinating. In, in Because of the success that was created in the 90s, we had huge structures that were created by individuals that you know, we're 25, 30, 50 levels deep below them. And, and so you really got a viewpoint of understanding how important the structure of your organization is. And, and here was the bottom line. If there's nothing going on below you, you're in trouble. So from a leader's perspective, if he has distributors with nothing below them, he's in trouble. And of course, people didn't pay attention. They just kept marching on. I've got to find somebody else, find somebody else, find somebody else. And then just end up re replacing, 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 replacing. So there is a technology to our business. There is a tech and that you'll find the answers on DaveRolf.com. You'll find the answers in the Take a Look series and the Building Success series and the Q&A part, you know, frequently asked questions. And the reason is, is because these, this is what I observed. This isn't what I think. It's 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 uh, you know I heard one the other day is you know you're looking for you. Well, no, you're not, because you'll never find you. You're unique. <laughs> you're you're at one of a, a gazillion. You, the, what you want though, is you want to find people that want what you want. That's what the secret is. See, I knew that I needed to make eight thousand dollars a month, and what I what I quickly understood at the beginning was, ah, if I need that, and it's made up of people that are building this, but I need people that need the same thing I do or want similar things. Bingo. Now, there isn't anybody in my business that's like me. No, <laughs> I'm sorry, it just isn't. There's nobody like me in my business. And thank goodness. That's probably a blessing more than a disguise. But anyway, thank goodness for that. And, and thank goodness everybody's individual and, and has their own story. So the key to your success here is for you to develop your story, your way. The mechanics are simple. You know, the mechanics are the mechanics of the business. It's been going on forever and a day, and it's not going to change any. It's just we have a different audience and different circumstances. Okay, so you have to figure out how to play that game. But anyway great message today. I'm going to stop the recording and um, 
So thanks for being on today. We'll see you on the next Take a Look or the next Frequently Asked Questions. This is Dave Rolf and this is the Smart Networker. Bye for now.